you want to look, and I think everybody looks and says, well, all these development things that were happening, but if he had the ability to do a lot of things in fantasy through the internet, you know, he could be almost like if you could imagine somebody on steroids. By the time he comes out and is ready to perpetrate this crime, he has developed much further along in his fantasy life. Um, and, and I think the general public struggles sometimes with trying to understand that that fantasy aspect. Uh, we've used the terminology, you know, of, of a hunter who goes out and, and prepares uh, and, and goes out and studies the land. And I think that's that's good in that context. But I, I was thinking about this the other day. It's, you know, as human beings, Greg's always talking about how people use, um, you know, how, how people who are doing these types of things, they're natural, normal behaviors, but they're using, uh, you know, uh, illicit ways or illicit means to satisfy those needs. And in the same way that somebody might fantasize, I think for people to kind of get their mind around this, think of somebody who, who wants to take a, a, an international trip. They fantasize about it. They dream about it. They plan about it. It's, you know, they, and today you can go out on the internet, you can look at all the pictures, you can see all the places you're putting this thing together. And it really is such a small period of time for the trip itself but it's that build up to that trip. And so for this person, they're not thinking about a trip. They're thinking about uh, an activity with somebody that, you know, obviously in this case has gone all the way to murder. But I think all those pieces are at play here. Just my thought. It was, do you think he had uh, a knife with him post April? Uh, you know, let's say, let's say he was doing the surveillance post April. And this is, again, it's a hypothesis at this point until sure. he tells everybody you know, uh, you know what's going on, but uh, what do you guys think? Well, I can just say real quickly that that isn't unusual. I can think of a number of the uh, serial killers we had that, that give them a sense of power to have the knife. Uh, some of them would have a gun. I'm thinking mm -hmm. of Ed Kemper uh, would, uh, and then to not have to use it remember him talking about that, um, to feel that he could still control the situation. So I would agree that he had the knife. At least he had it from a April. If that's, if that matches when uh, he, he got it. Again. Now, regarding this knife thing, what I'm proposing is, is that even when, for example, if he did indeed set these cameras up and all that in this woman's house, uh, I can't help but believe when he went in there the knife was probably on him. I mean, it's like, I think he didn't know, sometimes he didn't know what was going to be the first time, you know? But I think he ultimately decided he was going to do it under the cloak of darkness when everybody was asleep. And so they had maximum control over the situation. I mean, uh, uh, Greg and Dean, I mean, wouldn't you say there are dress rehearsals for these yeah. kinds of murders? You know, there's practice runs. There are things like that. I mean, wouldn't you say that? Uh, yeah. That, that that was probable in whoever yeah. committed this these murders. Yes, definitely. You know, it's interesting. <clears throat> oftentimes, we'll when when teaching concepts and profiling, um, we talk about uh, hunters and the similarities between the behaviors of hunters, uh, legitimate hunters, versus some of these offenders and the hunting type of behaviors that they engage in prior to the commission of the crime, that um, they'll dress up, uh, they'll read a lot of material, um, they'll, they'll go out to those hunting grounds or those areas where they, a hunter will identify where they want to hunt uh, once the, the time is right, uh, depending on what type of uh, prey that they're looking for. They'll take their weapons with them, they spend a lot of time with the weapons, preparing them, polishing them up, being sure they're clean, um, taking photographs, photographs of the areas that they go to, et cetera. And, and it's very, very similar kinds of behaviors, isn't it? It's ritualistic almost um, in preparation for that ultimate objective um, to achieve and, and experience that fantasy. And But what, what they often find is that the most satisfying part of the whole process is that preparatory phase. Yep. It's the hunting, it's the studying, it's the imagining, it's the walking in the area, it's the, the constant the creativity 
uh, that they're engaging in as they, as they prepare for it. And then once the crime has been committed, now the work begins more yeah. than ever. Now they've got to protect themselves. They've got to avoid identification, apprehension, etc. cetera. And, and particularly that first go around. Uh, and they, they learn from that. And then they, of course, find that typically the, the fantasy that they had far exceeded reality. And, but they're still looking for that ultimate fantasy, and they'll go back and do better the next time if they're fully committed to it, depending on what that experience was. That was that his dad doesn't didn't think that he was involved. And I know Ann has raised the point several times. What did they talk about during yeah. that drive? And also, why did they go all those hours out of their way and add hundreds of miles to the drive instead of doing what Google Maps said and just drive directly home. I mean, what was going on there? Uh, I, I mean, I, would everybody agree that that was it, that's it, rather don't, strange? Don't you find it interesting too that that uh, immediately? I mean, as soon as the he shows up uh, wearing gloves and a white Elantra, immediately there doesn't seem to be a lot of discussion. There's a presumption by at least one of those sisters that hey, it's him. It's him, you know. There was it was it seemed to be right out in the open, and she addresses it very quickly. So, you know, there had to be a lot of precipitating behavior through the years that she was keeping in mind. Not just those two things that that, that seemed to be coincidental, but all the other things that she's thinking about throughout the years. It seemed to be very odd. I mean, think about those family dynamics. Yeah. Right. Everybody's there. Brian's there. He's got his gloves on. And your sister says, you know what? To your point, Greg, I'm not really sure <laughs> you're not the guy. See, I found it interesting that he, from what they're saying, at least from the their tracking ability of his phone and stuff, they've been able to put him there multiple times, right? Right. And if I understood correctly, but on the 12, night 12 that times. this, 12 times, but on the night that this happened, he put his phone on plane mode and when he went over there correct so my question correct. is yeah. were there other times right in other words, yeah. they said there were 12 times how many other times did he put it on plane mode was right. he over there and to your point and was that was this the night that was the big crescendo night or did he get in there something happened and you know this was a this was another walkthrough he was just gonna get in there and a maybe recall. check it out and be there and kind of feel it out and then something happened inside there yep. that it's go time well it's isn't it um accurate also that one of those victims had just come back for a yes. visit that yeah they had already landed a job in texas where, he'd already moved out yeah 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 and she was on her way you know, it, was that just coincidental that that just worked out for him? Uh, right. Does he know about that? How did he find out about it? So here's a question for the panel. But that what's then the significance, uh, you know, that he's had the, the purchase of the knife. He buys it on Amazon, uh, which has been revealed through Dateline on April 22nd. The homicide goes down, right? Uh, later, you know, whatever, November. So he's had this knife for quite some time. Uh, so nice. How yeah. significant is that in his behavioral analysis, you know, the thought process is going on here, you think? Well, I, I think what's been stated uh, before, too, that I think he most likely, when he was out on his uh, hunting trips, if you will, um, he carried that knife with him. And why? Why would he do that? Because he has to be comfortable with it. It's got to be part of him. Um, and he's got to be prepared in the event that he's going to use it. Uh, I, I think that he has used it. He has used it before in one capacity mm -hmm. or another, whether he's um, the individual responsible for this, would have practiced with that weapon on inanimate objects, and who knows, uh, possibly uh, uh, live objects as, for example, animals. Uh, there's certainly a possibility. But he has to, it, it wouldn't be surprising that he would want to use it so he would know what it felt like and also know what it felt like uh, in terms of the reaction of a type of victim in preparation for that kind of thing. Um, so he's he's definitely prepared. He's in training. And so he's been doing that for at least seven months. He's got something in mind about us using that. There's no indication that he's a hunter, that he goes out there and, and he, you know, 
Uh, he knows how to uh, take down animals and clean animals, etc. cetera. Uh, so, Interesting. Yeah. And, dove, and, and dovetail into Greg's thought there. Where, what, are your, what are your feelings? No, I, I would absolutely agree that he has tried this, that um, it's all practice. I, I like in training. That's a good uh, visual for us to have. But why that particular night? And why at the time of that? He had time to be in the house. Um, if you look at the timetable for the other people, I think the other thing of the two that were in the first floor and his encounter with them, and yet he doesn't do anything. And the other big factor is the, uh, the she. Couldn't, did he just not realize he had left it? You know, if he had already killed the people, why could, he could have gone back to get it. 